Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime 5, the 5 biggest news stories in the last 24 hours pertaining to Nintendo. We have a packed show for you today, so I don't want to waste too much of your time. Let's just get right into the news! Our first story deals with sales figures coming in for Live Alive, that full-on remake of a classic RPG by Square Enix that never actually released in the West until now, and it released exclusively on Nintendo Switch. Well, the producer and director of the game were in a live stream event earlier today and mentioned that it had sold 500,000 units worldwide. Now, this isn't naturally the million selling stuff we're used to hearing from Nintendo's games, especially for exclusives, but for such an old IP coming back and the way they were talking about it on live stream, Square Enix and the producer and director seemed extremely happy with these sales and ended up exceeding their expectations. So this might not have been some massive project they invested heavily in, but they're really pleased with the results. And who knows, they'll probably eventually bring Live Alive to other platforms as well. Hey, this is kind of good news. So let's move on to our next story. Yesterday, Sega dropped a brand new trailer for Sonic Frontiers, an overview trailer that again looks absolutely incredible. And here's a look at it while we go over some of the finer details released through PR. Sega said, in Sonic's newest adventure, he's headed to the Starfall Islands in search of Chaos Emeralds with Amy and Tails when trouble strikes and they are all sucked into a strange digital world called Cyberspace. Sonic soon escapes and finds himself on an ancient mysterious island where he must face sinister enemies and uncover the truth of the Starfall Islands while searching for his lost Friends, now this is a bit of a story trailer, so I don't want to dive too deep for people trying to stay away from spoilers. You can watch the full trailer in the link down in the description. But yes, Sonic Frontiers just seems to keep looking better and better and better. All the gameplay coming out of Gamescom looked phenomenal as well. And this is now on my must-buy list. So raise your hand if you've played Skyrim. I mean, if you like Western RPGs and haven't at this point, you really have no excuse because Skyrim's on everything. Remember when it was on refrigerators and Amazon Alexa? What? What? Alexa, play Skyrim. You're level 57 and see a tall snowy mountain. Climb it. And your Samsung Smart Refrigerator. Islandus. Well, Skyrim is back in the news again because it's the game that keeps on giving. And that is because the Skyrim Anniversary Edition has been rated by Peggy for Switch. Now it's an 18 plus rating. But this is different than retailer leaks because Peggy ratings means something was factually submitted to the ratings board for a given platform. Now, Skyrim Anniversary Edition actually came out last year, but this version of the game has all the DLC. It has brand new fishing content, and as some of those fan-created mods are included in the game as well, and naturally, we have no idea when it's actually coming out. But with having a Peggy rating, it's likely going to be before the year is up. It was very strange when it wasn't announced for Switch last year because it wasn't as if the things done to Skyrim couldn't, you know, quote unquote, run on Switch. This is a pretty old game from the Xbox 360 days at this point. But hey, we are getting it this year. It just seems like it's another late port. But it's also an excuse for Skyrim to have yet another release in another year. I mean, I, I think Skyrim might even hold the record for the most amount of release years based on all the times that it's been released and re-released across different platforms and different mediums. So this next story is a rumor over a major game, a game that won Game of the Year in 2021 coming to Switch, and we're talking about It Takes Two. So this information comes from a leaker known as The Snitch, who has a 100% track record to date. However, this would be the first thing he has ever leaked for Nintendo Switch. Now, all of his leaks are cryptic, as is this one, and this one is coming through some emojis posted on his private Discord server. I don't want to spoil too much. What you're seeing on screen not only makes references to the Switch, but also a tree, a clock, a snow level, and a bee, and a house, which are all prominent stages in It Takes Two. The green shorts are actually worn by the main character Cody in the game, and the family shows a mother, father, and child, which is the family in the game. And lastly, the book is also a major character in the story 
as well. Now, It Takes Two won Game of the Year last year at the Game Awards and has an 89 on Metacritic for every platform it's on. It is an incredible co-op journey and comes from the mind of Joseph Ferris, who also made Brother A Tale of Two Sons back in 2013 and A Way Out back in 2018, two other incredible games that also reviewed very well. Before that, he was actually a film director and won awards for a 2005 movie called Zozo. At the Game Awards in 2017, advertising his new game at the time, A Way Out, he famously yelled F the Oscars, showing a little disdain over his highly awarded films that could never seem to do anything at the yearly Oscar awards ceremony, despite winning awards at many other places. It was also a small bit of affirmation that the Game Awards mattered to game developers and was of a similar, if not more, importance for game developers than the Oscars is currently for film. Naturally, I'm really excited for It Takes Two. It always felt like it would have been perfect on Switch and for some reason just didn't come out. Well, now it seems to be coming and hey, that's just something to look forward to. And our last story of the day comes from a, another rumor, but this is coming from a place that I think most of you will smile. We'll get to talk about Emily Rogers. Emily Rogers is literally the de facto Nintendo insider. She's been a Nintendo insider for decades with an incredible track record. Not impeccable. She has gotten a few things wrong here and there, but an incredibly accurate track record and is widely considered one of the most reliable leakers in the Nintendo universe. Here she is right now talking about GameCube games on Switch, but not for Nintendo Switch Online, but rather, oh boy, this is the exciting part, getting remade and or remastered for Nintendo Switch. Over on Fami Boards, in a thread where people were speculating over the next Direct, and many people were talking about remastered GameCube games because of Jeff Grubb with the Wind Waker HD, or the Princess HD, which were GameCube games remastered for Wii U, and then possibly coming over. Also, Metroid Prime remastered is something Jeff Grubb has talked about. She responded in the thread and said, no, it's true. Nintendo is going crazy with remasters and remakes. Most of the remasters mentioned in this thread are either in development or under serious consideration at Nintendo. Then she went on to quote two other people in the thread because she felt like they were highly accurate. First person was Instro who said, makes a lot of sense, always seemed like the next logical step once they were mostly through their Wii U catalog. A lot of value for those remasters slash remakes, much lower cost in dev times versus new games, and excellent calendar fillers. On that note, I do hope that Bot and Kato's remasters happen. I recall some time ago there was talk that Bamco had shot down the idea, but maybe things have changed. And then she also quoted Gartooth, who said, if Nintendo goes crazy on remasters next year, it feels like there could be a sign of a transition phase to new hardware. The Switch transition years for the 3DS included a ton of these types of releases. Wii U had ports of Mario Maker, Yoshi's Woolly World, Captain Toad, other ports including Luigi's Mansion and Kirby's Epic Yarn. Now, these are all ports that came over to the 3 3DS. There were also remakes of Fire Emblem 2, Metroid 2, and Mario and Luigi 1 plus 3. Then Emily Rogers, who was quoting them, said, had this to say, these posts from Gartooth and Instro sum up the situation very well. Also, Nintendo wants as many major IPs and franchises to be represented on Switch as possible, even if that means remastering or porting old games to make that happen. Then she goes on to note, because people were asking her, hey, do you know if this stuff's going to be real in the direct? Do you know anything about the Nintendo Direct? Because Jeff Grubb you know, said, hey, the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD will be at this Direct. So, hey, Emily, is there anything more you could tell us about the Direct? And she directly responded and said, I don't know the contents of the Direct. But whatever Nintendo announces, I hope it makes you all happy. Now, naturally, there's a ton of GameCube games out there that people would like to see remastered or remade for Nintendo Switch or even future Nintendo platforms. Obviously, the aforementioned Metroid Prime remaster also porting over the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. But beyond all that, like Thousand Year Door, Rogue Squadron, I don't know. There, there are so many. I want you guys to go down to the comment section below and tell me what GameCube games you want to see remastered in HD or just remastered in general or even full-on remakes down in the comments below. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojack from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about today's Prime 5. Did I do good? This is the last one of the week. It was incredible. Thank you for joining me on this journey. We back at it this weekend with a couple other different types of videos. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.